Subscribe to this channel and then ring that bell. Ding, ding, ding. That way you ain't missing anything. Oh, yeah. We're going to talk about this shirt before we go off the air. And happy Mother's Day to every mother on the planet. Happy Mother's Day to you. Tonight, it's about celebrating Jesus by blessing you. You know, and yes, and a great Happy Mother's Day to my mother. And to my Aunt Ross, my Aunt Cheryl, and my cousin Tamia. Happy Mother's Day, ladies. Tonight, we're really gonna talk about the impact of a mother. And before we go off the air, I'm, I'm gonna get real and I'm gonna get candid before we go off the air. Tonight, as we take it into the world infamous Resonate Church and uh, also say Pastor Pam Oaks standing by, tonight, we're gonna talk about a mother's influence. Get your pen, get your paper. Take notes and take extra notes. You're gonna need them. Pam Hovis, happy Mother's Day to you. Let's rock and roll. Let's go. Let's go resonate. My name is Pam Hovis. I'm associate pastor at Resonate Church. And this morning, I want to talk to you about a mother's influence. You know, mothers are the biggest influences in our lives. They teach us everything. They mold us into the individuals that we are going to be. They correct us. They encourage us. They discipline us. But a mother's influence upon her child is, uh, in effect, you know, it affects our very every part of our lives. Whether we believe in Jesus or, and whether we stay faithful and trustworthy or whether we have fear and always wonder. So I want to talk about different mothers throughout the Bible this morning. I'm just going to reference them real quick. But, you know, there were mothers in the Bible who were great influences on their children. And one of the first ones that comes to my mind is in 2, P 2 Timothy 1 and 5. And they're talk, it's talking about Timothy and the influence that his mother and grandmother had upon him and how that, that could be seen in the faith that he had. You see, Timothy was influenced by the life of his mother and grandmother, and Paul was so excited to see that influence in him because if they influenced him in such a way that he knew who Jesus was and that he wanted to serve God, then that meant he was going to influence those who he came in contact with. So, you know, sometimes we, we realize that there's things in our lives we hope our children don't pick up on. And there's things in our life we hope, we hope that they grab and run with. And I'm the same way. There's things in my life that if I could do them different, I would. But as a mother, I've made lots of mistakes. But as a mother, I've also known that my Jesus can take what I have in my heart for him and I can 
I can give it to my daughter. I can give it to my grandson. Whether they take it and run with it, it's, it's not always exactly going to turn out the way we want it to, but at least that foundation is there, and God honors that. And so, uh, my next mother I want to talk to you about is the mother of Moses. Now, we all know this story, and it's in Exodus chapter 2, verses 1 through 10, and it talks about how that the king had ordered the death of all the male children, and how that she wasn't willing to give up her son. She wanted to save him, and so she did what she could to save him. She, we all know she made a basket and put him in it and floated him down the river and his sister kept an eye on him. We know that the Pharaoh's daughter plucked him out of the river and, and we know that whole story. But do you realize the influence that mother had upon that son? Had she not bowed, had she bowed down to the king, he was gone. And Moses is such a part of our history as Christians. So in essence, she influenced us. But she influenced him by being a mother who was unwilling to do the unthinkable and just let her son die. She was willing to put him in a river. And some of us would say, you know, that's not a good place for a child to be. But she put him in a river to save him. And with the intention, she would go and nurse him. She would find him. His sister would watch him to make sure he was okay. Now, how she planned on hiding him if he, as he grew, I don't know. But she didn't have to because God provided a way out of her faithfulness. And then Moses, she even, she even was hired on to be his nursemaid, his own mother. So we have to stop and think sometimes how we influence our children. We may not see it as soon as we want to, but we don't know what God's plan is on down the road. And just the influence that Moses had, yes, Moses made a lot of mistakes, but God still had a plan and he was still the leader of the children of Israel. And he led them through the wilderness and, you know, was doing his very best to get them on into, into that. And if you think about that, he led them. But then Moses also was a leader for Joshua who got to lead them on into the promised land. So that influence of that mother, that willingness not to give up on her child. And the reason I would tell you that story is sometimes our children, we butt heads with them. <laughs> sometimes we disagree with them or we don't understand their actions. But you can never give up on them. They're always of value to God. We don't know what the future is for them. We don't know. We know if we love God, He has a plan. And, you know, we can't see it. We don't understand it. But I am sure that there is something in the future of your child that God has a plan for. Whether you say, well, my son's in prison and my daughter's done this. God doesn't look at those things. He looks at what he has for them to do and what they're capable of doing. And your influence as a godly mother will shape them on down the line, even if they go, go astray for a while. It will be the one constant thing that will pull them back into the fold of God and back on track for what that plan is. So we can't give up on what we do. You know, um, a mother is selfish. Selfless, not selfish. <laughs> a mother is selfless. She is loving. She makes sacrifices for her children. She makes sure they have their wants and their needs. And she puts all of that above her own. A mother will work hard just to equip her child with whatever. And, and uh, you know, I would do without so my daughter could have cheerleading clothes, uh, band, you know, she needed a saxophone. I had to come up with money to pay for that. And we do all of those kind of things. And, and th those aren't big things, but sometimes we sacrifice just so that our children can have, because we want them to have a better life than us. And one good example of that is Hannah in the Bible. In 1 Samuel uh, chapter 1, and it, it's a long scripture, but you, can, you guys can read that. But she waited for her child. She ha didn't have a child, and she was discouraged, and she was barren, and she would cry out to God to give her the desires of her heart. And he was faithful to her. And he gave her a son, and his name was Samuel. And he, Samuel was a mighty man of God. And, but she made a promise to God, you give me my son you give me a child, and that child will always work for God. And so what she did was, once he came old enough to go work in the temple, that's what she did. She sent him to the temple to work. 
And if you've read your Bible, you know about Samuel. And if you haven't, you need to read on it because he was a mighty man of God. And he was, he was faithful to hear the words of God and to, uh, to be just what God wanted him to be. But that influence had to come from his mother. That she could have prayed and asked God for that child but never thanked God for him. She could have prayed and, and then when once she got her child, never gave him back to the Lord like she promised she would do. Now the Lord's not going to ask us probably to turn our child over into to somebody else like she had to do. But he makes us responsible for how they are raised. He, he wants us to teach them and through our lives see how that we rely upon God and how we, out of our faithfulness, even in hard times, we still love the Lord. Even when things are great, we still have time to stop and thank Him and be faithful. And that's how now that we, we give our children to the Lord. Lord, you gave Him to me. He's under my care, but I know you have a plan. And we have to believe that God is going to see that plan through. Whether we do or not, we can can't be selfish with them because, you know, who are we to stop them from growing in the Lord and, and from learning? We have, to be, we have to be that mother who's willing to show them that Jesus is in everything. If they just learn, if they will just learn to believe in Him and count upon Him. There are many, many others throughout the Bible. But before we talk about them, I want to read this to you. It said, as mothers, we must realize that surrendering children to God is the best thing we can do for them. When we release control to Him, we can open up a door for God to do amazing things in our children's lives. And we hold the key to that door. As mothers, if we can teach them. I remember as a young girl, I would go to my grandmother's house and you would hear her praying in the living room. I've heard my pastor preach on that lots of times, how she, he would sneak in the back door and just listen to her pray. But that was an influence on me and my brother. I know how my mother, when she would pray, I didn't worry that it might happen. I just knew it would happen. She was always, my mother was the one who did without everything just to make sure that me or Brian had what we wanted. But she also instilled in us who Jesus was. And so you are influencing your children. And, but I want you to stop and think, how am I influencing them? And are you somebody who's going to gripe and complain about everything or find fault in everything? Do you ever teach them how to pray? Do you teach them how to count on Jesus even when things are hard and we don't understand why they're going the way they're going? We have to remember that we influence them. And teaching them about Jesus is the greatest thing we could ever do. So throughout the Bible, there are many, many, many mothers. You know, we know that Eve was the mother of all living. She was the first mother, first mother to ever lose a child. So she knew about pain and suffering. There was Mary who just believed that what Gabriel told her and said, your son's going to be the savior of your people. We, she saw her son mocked. She saw him crucified. But she stood faithful by him through it all. A good example for us. Because we know what he's done for us, and we have to stand faithful no matter what we go through. In 2 Kings 4, ver chapter 4, verses 1 through 7, there was the widow woman who sought out Elisha so that her son could, would not be taken to, to pay her debt. Her husband had died, and she sought out the prophet saying, I need help. And uh, he came and, and did a, you know... The, filled the oil and it filled multiple vessels to the point that they didn't, couldn't even find any more vessels so that they could sell the oil to save her sons. You say, well, I've not ever been in that position. No, but you've been in the position that you can teach your child that when, even when we have nothing or, we, or we're in a bind and we just can't make that next meal, God can provide. But it's how you handle it. It's how you present it to them. Do they, are they seeing in you a mother who gets so scared and so frustrated that they leave God out of the picture? It's easy to um, focus so much on that that we lose focus on God. And what, that's what our children will do as they grow. Rather than turning to God, they will shut off. Or they will be discouraged and try to figure it out on their own when we can have, teach them to have faith in God and He's going to take care of it. And we know that Job's wife, she lost her children. She told God, just curse God and die. But Job here was the better <laughs> representation of how we need to be. He couldn't do that to God. 
and she was grief stricken and she was hurt because of the things that had happened but she went on to having 10 more children it was just a moment and sometimes those moments where we're the weakest and we don't understand that's when we get discouraged and she wasn't thinking about God she was thinking only about what was happening to her and we need to teach our children that sometimes things happen to us sometimes it's not good things but we still can rely on God to bring us through it. In 2 Samuel, we learn about Bathsheba. We know that her husband was murdered and, uh, because of the sins of the king but, and that she lost him. But she also became the mother of Solomon. So, and Solomon was a mighty man of God. So we can't just take things uh, that seem to, to be meant to destroy us and allow that to happen as mothers. Because if we do that, then our children will pick up that same, uh, for lack of a better word right here, lack, same uh, habit. If they see every time things get hard, you begin, you run the other way, or you get mad, or you, uh, you know, just forget about God, and I guess that's how I want to say it. You know, you, you're so focused on those things that you can't focus on God and what He's going to do. I, ha I know a young mother right now who's going through a divorce. And it, and it was, I mean, it just happened out of the blue. It was n something that was never expected. I mean, if you'd have told me they, would, they were going to be divorced, I would have never believed it. But in the process of this and the unbelief of it, uh, now this young woman is struggling with her ministry, a great minister, a great minister, uh, not only in music and song, but as far as preaching the word, oh, awesome but she is so taken back by what has happened and how that knocked her feet out from under her that she has forgotten that God still has a plan even though she loves God even though her her and her family know that God is great they got the wind knocked out of them for a better better way of saying it and she just cannot seem to pick herself up and go on. It's more of a, I don't understand how this happened. You know, why would God's plan mean that? But she has to remember that in every situation, God has a plan, and it's her responsibility to step up and to raise her children with the knowledge that, hey, this happened to us, but it wasn't meant to kill us. It was meant for us to go stronger, and now she has a testimony. Pastor preached on that this morning, how that sometimes we take the things that are hard on us, and even though God brings us through it, we look at them with remorse, but we need to, as mothers, look at them, okay, it's a stepping stone, and now I have a testimony, I can help another mother going through the same thing. Is it easy? No, but sometimes we forget that. We could talk about Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist, who was the forerunner of Christ. Rebecca, the mother of Jacob and Esau, she had, she had a favorite son. And, you know, as a child, you don't want to know your mom has a favorite son. So we have to be careful what we do. Uh, Rachel, the mother of Joseph and all that would happen to him. And, but look where he went and the influence of how he was raised. Didn't, he didn't settle on having hatred for his brothers. But he settled on being able to bloom where he was at. And the influence that he had ended up saving his own family. So there are many others through the Bible. Many that we don't even know their names. Great mothers who influenced their children to help save a country or a family. Mothers who chil whose children were prophets and warriors, servants of God. There were some who, mothers who had children that were, um, that made mistakes. We could talk about Samson. There were mothers who had children who were doubted and who worried, and mothers who had some that were faithful and strong. But we're going to face things in our life. We're going to face things that are going to impact us. And if we're not careful how we handle those, those situations impact our children. Some have wavered and some have waited patiently for God to move. And your actions will influence how your children handle things in their future. You can never give up, and you can never underestimate your influence. In fact, I have another story that I want to relate to you this morning. And, and this woman, uh, we don't even know her name.
but her influence is present in her son. In John 6, verses 9 through 14, and this one I want to read to you, if that's all right. It says, There is a lad there which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed the, the, to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fish as much as they would. And when they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. And therefore they gathered them, them together and filled twelve baskets with fragments of five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had been eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, this is of a truth that prophet that should come into the world. Now we all know this story, and it is a great miracle. It is a great miracle by Jesus. And you may be asking yourself, what in the world does that have to do with Mother's Day? But I want you to get this. As part of the preparation for this miracle, there was a mother who packed a lunch for her son. She may not have known what the Lord would have done with the five loaves and two fish, but she knew that her son would need to eat. And the Lord used what she prepared for her son. Her love and compassion for him to show his love and compassion for those who were following him. You say, really, Sister Pam? But let's think about this. As mothers, we prepare the way of our children. We do not always know the direction they will take. Sometimes we wonder if they have gotten anything from us at all, anything they can hold on, hold on to. We wonder if they will remember the important things as we grow. Will they think of us with fondness, or will they only remember our mistakes? But this mother had taught her son to share. She prepared a meal for him that Jesus would use to feed over 5,000 people. The disciples didn't take this child's food away from him. He offered it, which means his mother had influenced him in that area also. He went to, he went to see the Jesus that everyone was talking about and following, and he became a part of a miracle because his mama packed him a lunch. So you never know the influence. We never know what part of your influence God's going to use. Your influence on your child could place them in a position that God could use to save people spiritually and physically. Where will your influence carry your child or God's love and mercy? You may never know. You see, as mothers, a mother's love is like God's love. They love us in spite of what we are because they don't look at our actions. They look upon us as their children. That's why a mother's love is the closest thing to God's love that we can imagine. God's love, God loves us with unmerited love called grace. And he has given the same capacity to a mother's heart. Because a mother's heart can influence in many ways. Whether it's from packing a lunch or just teaching them how to pray, teaching them to be kind, teaching them to be gentle, or to show mercy, or to be thoughtful about others, or how to handle something when it's not the greatest situation at home, how to say, I'm sorry, how to ask for forgiveness. You see, that's the things that mothers teach their children. And so if I could inspire you today to stop for just a minute when you think you've done all you can and you just don't understand. Stop and think about the influences you've made in your children's lives. You say, well, I can't see them yet, but God can see them. And he's going to use that child and the influence that you have upon them to bring that child to what his plan is if you'll just give him time. So don't be discouraged. Don't focus on the bad things. Don't fo focus on the how many times you've had to tell them no and they're still not listening or how many wrong choices they made and you've had to go pick them up or you've had to go get them out of jail or you're having to go visit, visit them in prison or maybe they just went off to college and you think they forgot everything I taught them. You've still influenced them there. Just believe that God will, will bring that out of them when, when it's the time. 
because a mother's influence doesn't last for just a day or two. It lasts for a lifetime. Thank you for joining us today. Hi everyone, I'm Corbett Chris Heineken, the Dean of Arkansas Sportscasters and host of Rest Day Excel. Want we'll to say a special thank you for reasoning to amplify Jesus with us here today. No matter where you are, if you're joining us live here at Rest Day Church, whether you're joining us nationwide courtesy of your local syndicated television stations across the country, or if you're joining us internationally and globally courtesy of our YouTube simulcast. Thanks so much for resonating Jesus with us. Now, you ask it, and you say, corporate, you know, resonate. Now, you guys always bless us, but we want to turn around and bless you through the act of worship called giving. How do we do it? Like you ask. We are multiple ways, four of them in particular, on which you can resonate your giving. Check it out. Number one, join us live and in person here at Resonate Church at a brand new location. 3702 East Highland Drive. It is directly across the street from All Star Music in Jonesboro, Arkansas. Sundays, 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. Wednesday nights at 6.30 and we do keep in mind things scheduled subject to change. Option number two, online. That's a little tidly thing right there. Use the term Resonate Church AR. That's right. Everything right there on the screen. Resonate Church AR if you want to resonate your giving online. Just follow the directions and you can do that safely and securely. Option three, your cell phone. Look, we all got one. Might as well use it, shall we? What resonate your giving using your cell phone? All you gotta do, text the word give to that number right there on your screen. Safe, fast, secure, easy, simple to do. Option four, mail it. If you want to mail your contributions to us, courtesy of a check or money order, please make all checks and money orders payable to Resident Church and send it to the address on your screen. Once again, if you want to resonate your giving courtesy of a mailing option, send your check or money order, make all checks and money orders payable to Resident Church and send it to the address on your screen. And those are the ways you can resonate your giving. And remember, Show love, your peace, and say Jesus. Oh, hey, what up, man? What's up, buddy? How are you, bro? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Oh, my goodness. Woo. Man, I just came out of wrestling, man. You know it's all good, man. Woo. And son, what's talking about it? Hey, why don't you come join us? Sunday, it's 10 a.m. Come join us. Woo! Sunday night scheduled to change. Wednesday. Wednesday. Wednesday, 6.30, it's on. Our women's ministry is strong and rooted. <sighs> Our men's ministry has a solid rock foundation. All the kids can have so much fun. So can you. Our church is a great family church. And your family will love it too. Come join us at Resonate. So love. Give peace. Resonate Jesus! Mm. Impactful words. From an impactful mom. Day Tay Pam and Happy Mother's Day to you. Now God designed different roles for man and for woman different roles. When it comes to birth and life, there's a reason why God placed the woman to do that. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Moms, believe it or not, you're a lot closer to God than what you think. And you impact a lot of kids' lives. And I know I'm I know I'm saying this because I got my own mother watching this program.
don't ever devalue yourself and think that you're not worthy enough or that you're not qualified enough. Don't ever think that you're not qualified. God chose you for to burn lives and to people like me. Every mother is different, every mother is unique, and every mother has a unique set of characteristics that makes her special more than anything else. And yeah, it's no secret, myself and my mom have quote unquote issues. But I still love my mom no, no matter what. And let me get real for a second. And of course I've always been real and I was real in that last statement. Let me get real for a second. When other folks are getting blessed, don't get jealous of them. Hey, grandmas. If grandkids are getting blessed, go see your grandpa. Don't get jealous of them. And don't hold grudges because your grandkids are getting blessed and you're jealous because your grandkids are getting blessed. If your grandkids are getting blessed, that's a great thing. Don't ruin their victory. And don't hold a grudge against someone that you've had for the last 35 years. Yeah? I said that worldwide and I said it on television and I'm not going to apologize for it because I've seen it with my own eyes. If your grandkids are blessing you, be happy. Be happy. They love you as much as you love them. And moms, if your kids are getting blessed, be happy for them. Dads, don't be jealous of mom. If moms, if moms, if moms are getting blessed, dads, don't be jealous of them. And moms, if dads are getting blessed, don't you be jealous of them. God so respect our persons. And if you're holding a grudge, that's like 30 plus years, because you didn't get blessed with something 30 to 35 years ago, but all of a sudden, your grandkids get blessed, maybe you ought to check yourself in the mirror spiritually and see where you're at. And I'm talking to grandmas and grandpas. I'm not sure why God got me going in that direction, but I'm rolling with it. This ain't none of me, it's all God. What love are you passing down? I mean, that's a message for both grandmas and grandpas. And expectant mothers, be blessed and be thankful that you got a child. Birthing inside of you that's about to be produced and about to have a great life. Don't take the life away from that child. It's a big, big, big deal when life is birthed onto this planet and God chose you to be the ones that births greatness into the world. You want the example? Mary. And what was the birth of that? The virgin birth and the awesomeness of Jesus.
on this planet. God, thank you so much for resonating yourself to us. Thank you at home for watching. Hey, ain't no service like a live rest day service because a live rest day service will stop. What's to be left out? Join us live rest day church info right there on the screen. Plus, four ways to rest day your worship through the act of giving. Rest day church shows world.com is the other option. And on pictures, news, scoops, views, info, so much more. Facebook.com forward slash rest day church shows world. And you're watching this program on the YouTube Simulcast. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, ding ding, that way you are missing thing. And yes, on this Mother's Day night, you see this shirt right here. The three E's of prayer, engagement, enablement, enlargement. That's the front. Check out the back. Prayer engages God, prayer enables God, and prayer enlarges his kingdom. This is the Aunt Pam shirt. That's right, the Aunt Pam shirt. You can get this shirt and all the other ones only one place and one place only. Rest of the church. Make sure you join us this Thursday night for another great episode right here. Thursday night, we're back at a regular time of 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central. Make sure you join us. Until then, for everyone at Resonate Church and for everyone at Syndicated Media Television Partners Group, I'm Corporate Chris Hodkin. We say to you, show love, give peace, you know it. Resonate Jesus. We'll see you this Thursday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, for Resonate the Sound. Good night, Canada. Good night, everybody. Thanks for watching. We'll see you Thursday night. Neither death nor